Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. Dudes, today I got a video for you guys that gives me faith in the new generation of graffiti artists, right? <laughs> There's a little hope left. I swear it. So check this out. In the graffiti community, it's becoming a growing kind of a trend where we're seeing the newer generation of graffiti artists not really care about the rules of graffiti. They don't really care about the ethics and as a result they go over whoever they want whenever they want wherever they want however when I was recording one of the rating videos I stumbled onto this right here and that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video when we're talking about the hierarchy of graffiti and when you actually need to pay attention to this so without further ado let's jump to that clip real quick and we'll come back here for a little bit of a deeper dive on the topic oh dude I all right I gotta give this guy a lot of respect he sent me a message saying that this is one of his first throwies ever and he didn't want to go over other people because he didn't want to like disrespect or step on anybody's toes. So he decided to do it on the floor. And let me just say, this right here in red looks like it's gonna be a piece or a stray letter of some kind. Probably done by somebody who's a little bit less experienced, but the hand style looks like it might have been done by somebody who's a little bit more experienced than the guy who did the red. So let's take this opportunity to talk about the hierarchy of graffiti. Kind of what can go over what and what's acceptable to do. Now obviously this is going to depend on the spot you're going to, because in some spots you would have to buff the wall, in other spots you don't have to do that. But let's assume we're only talking about hitting spots in the streets and things of that sort. So hand styles are at the lowest part of the totem pole. Everything can go over a hand style, but hand styles can't really go over anything else without causing problems. Throwies are next up on the totem pole, and it's here where people make a little bit of a distinction, where they say hollow throwies are above hand styles, and then filled in throwies are above hollows. Just to keep it simple, we're not going to get into all the differentiations of different kinds of pieces and all that, so pieces go over throwies. Wink, wink, hint, hint. This green tag right here should not have gone over the person in red. Now props to him for not starting beef. Props to him to kind of like at least thinking about the rules of graffiti, thinking about the ethics, and trying to play on the better side of that. But one of the things you gotta keep in mind is a lot of people view it as a disrespect to yourself to paint your name on the floor. Now this varies from person to person. Some people don't care, other people do. I'll leave that to each individual to decide. But it might have been better just to find a different wall entirely. Because for this example specifically, you probably aren't gonna do your throwy big enough in order to cover the entire piece even though you might cover just that hand style, which doesn't look to occupy all the space on that wall, which means people would misinterpret that and think that you went over the piece and not this guy. Now here's the thing, depending on the spot you're at, these kinds of rules can change. Now if we're talking about legal walls, or we'll say DL spots, spots that are like pretty established as everyone in the community comes around here to paint that kind of spot. Well in these locations, the hierarchy isn't all too applicable because while yes, sure, certainly the hierarchy still applies, no one's really using it because everyone does pieces here. It's very rare that you'll come across a throwy or just a hand style on the wall. And even if it is just a throwy or a hand style on a wall, it'll quickly get buffed out and people will go over it with their mural or their piece. But you gotta be careful with these spots though, because you see, depending on the kind of legal or chill spot that this is, it might be completely okay just to rock another piece on top of somebody else and nobody cares. This is especially common for DL spots or practice spots. On the other hand, in some of these spots, you have to allow for them to have a bit of a lifespan. That way, the piece can actually be seen by other people. And in other places, you need to get 100% clearance from whoever either runs the wall or permission from the person who did the piece in order to actually paint over the piece. And that's, once again, for these higher quality type of walls. Now, I don't think I made this clear enough, and I want to take a second to go ahead and establish this point a little bit. We're not talking about legal walls in the sense of something that's on a main street that's facing, you know, the public eye and that, you know, somebody got paid to do the job. We're we're talking about a permission spot where the owner says, hey, you guys can go ahead and paint this wall, do whatever you want. Nobody gets paid for anything, but you guys also won't get arrested here. Something a little bit more down to earth. Now this is the part where a lot of people say, oh well, burners go over everything, and they start to make really specific distinctions, like straight letters don't go over pieces, but pieces go over straight letters, and wild styles go over pieces, but then burners go over wild style. Here's the issue though, a burner is an opinion based title. A burner is a type of piece that is better than everything else around it. Now, now, granted, if we have a hundred toys on a wall and then a legend comes through and rocks a piece, well then clearly the legend is going to have the burner. That's an objective truth. However, if you have a hundred of the same caliber graffiti artists, who's to say who's better than who? You don't really know. So at that point, a burner becomes an opinion-based title. This is all really just a fancy way to say if somebody's better than somebody else, the better person gets to pretty much get the spot. And it's not them starting beef, it's more a matter of well, their work is clearly higher caliber than yours, and higher caliber work takes precedence over lower caliber work. All 
Also, a quick interjection here, practice spots that are definitely illegal also kind of fall into this category where people are there to practice and they don't really care about the hierarchy. So you'll see random things on top of random things because people just don't care about the hierarchy in these practice spots. Not everywhere has these kinds of spots, but if you come across them, just know, don't get too invested in what you put on those walls. Now, some of you guys will look at the hierarchy and think to yourselves, man, the area I'm in doesn't have a lot of walls. I might have to do a hand sell over somebody's throwy, or I might have to do a throwy over somebody's piece just because there isn't any walls left. And my answer is no, not at all. Just don't do it. Pass up the opportunity. Because if you're that amateur to where you're saying, oh man, we don't have any walls, there's nothing to do. Like that, that's not some that's not even something that crosses an experienced graffiti artist's mind. And that's because they spread out and they get spots, they find walls. So if you're having this issue of there's not enough walls, then you're more than likely a newer graffiti artist. And if you're a newer graffiti artist, you don't have any business going over anybody for any reason, period. And you certainly don't have the renown enough in order to just take somebody's spot against the hierarchy and for people to be okay with it. Now this entire hierarchy that we just talked about really applies when you're out in the streets catching spots. That's when it's at its most applicable. And only because I know a lot of people are going to ask, well, well, how do stickers fit into this? Now this isn't a fact-based thing, but I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree with me just based on the comments on previous videos. If you ask me, everything goes over stickers. If I want to rock a tag and you got a sticker there and my tag goes over your sticker, too bad for you. And here's the reason I say that, because stickers get their power from how many you can put out. You can sit in your room all night and do a hundred or you know, 200, 300 stickers and then smack those around as much as you want. You got 200, 300 stickers out there. What are you getting upset about over one sticker? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like stickers power comes from their numbers. If you're gonna go ahead and start getting all emotional over one sticker, that says a lot about how much you get up and how much you value a single sticker that you could have easily have made multiple of. But once again, that's just how I view it. I've heard a lot of mixed views on this point. All right, dudes, that, I think that pretty much sums everything up. If you want to add anything on this topic, put it down in the comments below. Let's have a bit of a conversation about this. And on this topic, if you want to jumpstart your graffiti pieces, check out the bundle book we made in the description down below. It's the near, honestly the best information on the topic. And if you just want tutorials on graffiti in general, check out the best how to do graffiti playlist anywhere online. I think it's over here. <laughs> I was trying to figure that out. With more graffiti content right down here, and I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.